In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. For century upon century, followers of Christ have this great and holy week followed the events leading to his death and resurrection. We worship and pray during the hours leading up to the cross. We venerate that instrument of torture as a precious object. No matter how large we may imagine God's love to be, the holy and precious cross shows us that God's love is still larger. During his last week among us in the flesh, Jesus taught, he argued, he cried out, he answered questions and challenged both enemies and friends with the truth. He stood before his accusers silently. He allowed himself to be crucified. He accepted and entered into the realm of death for one purpose, so that he could defeat death and overcome it. Those who loved him buried his body. They mourned their loss, but not for long. We, with those who mourned, await the third day. On that day, we'll know for sure. Those who follow Christ to the tomb will also follow him to glory. That is why the experience of this week does not ever end. We celebrate Christ's death and resurrection through our days today, tomorrow, and into eternity. Today, we participate in the joy of the people of Jerusalem. We join them in their joyous song, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Today's triumphant entry got many, many things right, but today's triumphal entry also got the most crucial things wrong. Jesus receives a royal welcome for the wrong reasons. Those who cut branches of palm and spread their coats and palms on the road expected a great deal of this Jesus, but they did not expect enough. They wanted a king. They wanted a liberator. They needed a savior. Palm Sunday represents all of those clear moments when humanity has expressed its strongest wishes for God to step into our lives, for God to do something in this world. The problem is, the world has mistaken its own purposes for what the world wants out of God. God has been blamed for every tragedy that has happened in this world. We've heard for years the questions about earthquakes and floods and fires, tornadoes, even 9-11. Why, why didn't God take care of us? Why did God do this? Why didn't God do that? We love you, God, but why didn't you do it my way? Survivors of such tragedies offer the opposite and yet equal responses. The survivors say, it was God who saved us. It was God's will that we're still alive. Was it God's will that people died? Jesus' entry into Jerusalem this Palm Sunday, Sunday was misunderstood even by those who were expecting him. The people of Jerusalem wanted a general, a military hero. What did they get? A meek savior riding on a donkey. The triumphant entry teaches us to acknowledge Jesus Christ for whom he really is, not who we want him to be. We must learn today to allow God to be God. <clears throat> so for many who observe this great and holy week, many will not receive much spiritual benefit from it. So many look at Christ from the slanted perspective of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. We want from him what we want from him. We look to Christ wanting something from him instead of receiving what he has to bring to us. In our modern world, Jesus Christ is seen as a combination of Santa Claus, Abraham Lincoln, Donald Trump, and General MacArthur. 
prayers are made to Christ so that we might receive gifts. Not gifts of life and salvation, but gifts of protection, prosperity, freedom. We see Christ as a happy gift giver and then criticize him when we don't, don't get what we ask for. We question God when things don't go our way and people get killed or injured. Why didn't he step in and stop this? It's like asking God, why am I not a millionaire and have a life of leisure and luxury? We turn to God in Christ, we turn him into a gift giver, a controller of just our life and just our world. This was the very problem Christ encountered in Jerusalem that day. The people shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Christ comes among us today, and we shout, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Today, our witness, as we see him, is see how much our Heavenly Father values this world. Our Father values his only begotten Son and offers him for every person in the world who will trust him in faith. Christ comes among us as one of us, as a human being. He wants to stand with us, to become one with us and for us. The Holy Apostle Paul writes this to the Hebrew Christians. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our Heavenly Father gives us His Son to sit on the throne of heaven in order to arrange for our everlasting well-being. Christ is our representative. He provides everything we need, not everything we want. As St. Paul says in so many words, Christ has been there. He's done that. As God the Father did not step in to stop Christ's suffering or his death, God the Father did this. He raised his only begotten Son from death. This is the love of God. This is what his Son gives to us. This is what his Son gives for us, in us, to lead us not to a simple, comfortable, problem-free life, but to lead us to everlasting life with him. This is the love of the Father, not that he gives us something, it's that he gives us someone, a living person, a triumphant and victorious conqueror of faith. He gives us a savior, a redeemer. He gives us his only begotten son. In Christ resides all life and blessing. The son of God himself, second person of the Holy Trinity, comes among, among us once again today. He comes riding the back of a donkey. We bear palms and willow branches today from this church, like the people of Jerusalem. How will you receive this Christ on the donkey? Well, come back the rest of the week, and you'll see what he did for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.